Are you done yet? Hello everyone, I am Olive Blade and welcome to my wonderland. This week is a bit different. Most obvious thing, of course, is the setting. Now let's get to this box. So this is one of my hauls and it's a pre-owned haul. I bought the, all these figures for a pretty awesome price from a seller on Facebook Marketplace. I didn't expect to get this many figures from them, but at those prices I could not resist. Now, I did not... <laughs> I don't really do this often. I bought a figure that I have not seen the anime or read the manga of. And that is this Demon King figure. I didn't even know their name. And but I saw I saw this in someone's collection recently and I thought it looked really gorgeous. And then I saw this seller selling it for $50 and I'm like, yep, yeah, I'm gonna pick that up. Also this Sakura Miku Nendoroid, but we'll get back to that later. Now the main thing I wanted to buy from this seller was this marker figure because as many soul eater lovers know, this figure is really hard to get. Anyway, I amazingly picked her up from this seller. She does have a broken arm, which I'll show you more in detail later, for $50 AUD. I was shook. And the last thing I picked up was this Deep Sea Miku. Ah! I was, I probably was going to pre-order her because there's a re-release coming out soon, but then I wasn't sure because she's not on my priorities list, as in near the top, but she's still a figure I really did want to get. And I ended up picking her up for $80. Oh my goodness. I have these figures outside now and bring them to the buckets because, I'm not sure if you saw when I was showing you them, but these are really, really dusty. Ella actually admitted to me that these figures haven't been dusted for six years. I thought he might have used a little bit of blue tack on the arm to hold the arm, but and it dried up. Maybe you know how blue tack can get pretty dry. But it turned out to be the second option, which I thought it was, which is like a type of glue I've only seen that people use for garage kit, or at least that's my best guess. Now, for cleaning it, I just wanted to also show, because a lot of my collection, many people may not know, is actually second hand. I've collected it from different collectors or got it uh, second hand off eBay or proxy services over the years. I'm no stranger to cleaning figures, but I have to admit, these are probably the dustiest figures I've ever had the privilege of cleaning. And it is quite satisfying, I have to admit. But the main reason for me making this video is to show any other collectors or potential new collectors out there that you can clean figures like this and they'll be perfectly okay. Here I'm just using a gentle dishwashing detergent, lukewarm water, two makeup brushes which I got from Dyson. I also use these for dusting as well. They do have pigment on the end and I do not recommend getting brushes or at least being careful. But luckily with these brushes I haven't actually had any issues with paint transferring. I also have a second bucket that has fresh water in it which I rinse off all the suds. And as you saw at the beginning I did suds up the detergent in my hand so there's no clumps that will be left on the figure and dries. Now when cleaning this type of base, you have to be careful because you, obviously you can't remove the two pieces and you can see the seam and you don't want that to fill up as water. This can also be for some other figures so it's good to assess and look at your figures thoroughly and think about the best way of cleaning them before then. Another thing to be careful of is obviously I use the big brush for just a general big cleaning with suds and then I use the small brush to get into details but you have to be careful of the metal around that attaches the brush to the handle because you can scratch your figure easily. I'm just doing it quickly here because I'm so used and confident with doing it. I know I'm not going to scratch it. Pretty quick reflex otherwise. <laughs> oh my goodness. This Miku hair and her dress were, I have to admit, probably a pain to, <laughs> a pain to clean. 
because they're so beautifully detailed. Like I love it. It looks like seaweed hair hair, but so many curls in that. And especially with it being so dusty, you will notice it if I've missed a spot. I might have to rewash this, but we'll see. She's got a little bit of a scuff on her knee. I'll try to do my best to clean it off, but I might have to use something a bit stronger later. They're already, <laughs> they're, after cleaning these, they're already looking so much better. Disclaimer, I have no judgement if you don't want to clean your figures, that is absolutely fine. But being myself, I'm OCD a little bit with, I dust my figures outside my cabinets pretty, I, either every week or every two weeks, and then inside my cabinets every month. For whatever reason, I get a lot of dust accumulation in my room, which is a little frustrating. There are many reasons to dust figures, but if I was to give you one main reason as to why I personally like to dust figures is because I, what I love about figures is their beautiful sculpt and beautiful paint job. I'm sure we can all agree here. And when that gets dust on it, it even if it's vibrant, it does dull it down a bit and then you also don't get that beautiful sheen, shine and I feel like it takes away from its appearance overall. So that's why I personally like to regularly dust my figures. Looking at the Miku base here, it has a few scuffs and scratches, as one would think from where, even though this does look like it hasn't been touched for six years, so I'm not sure how it got those scratches. Anyway, giving it a good clean, I managed to take the figure apart, which was great, with no instructions. I know I could have easily looked up instructions, but I just got back from picking this up, which I did an outside exchange. Masks and keeping our distance, of course. Now then, getting on to this Nendoroid. I actually already own this Nendoroid, but he sold it for me for $25, which is pretty awesome because this retails at like 80 AUD dollars or more. But um, oh my goodness, I'm just showing you the dust. I, I really had to clean this box before I brought it inside. It just, if you couldn't see on the figures, I feel like it's the box is a good example of easily showing the dust accumulation on this. And the figures. Oh, I mean, look at that. Ah. And I'm just using a little bit of paper towel and a little bit of the soapy water. This is absolutely fine with this box because the box has like a gloss layer. I actually later, after cleaning this, I used a hand sanitizer wipe to wipe all over the box and. The cardboard's absolutely fine, you just have to be gentle and test it out, don't be too heavy handed, and you should be able to clean boxes. Now, just showing you the difference between the water, oh, why am I, I cringe by watching me stick my hand in that, but can you see how foggy that is? Oh, okay, and they're drying here, I have a container lid, which I'm using a bit of a, like a dining tray, which I'll bring inside it momentarily, but look at them all washed bring them to the desk inside. I'm just using my brush, which I did wash my brushes just with detergent and really boiling water and then I leave them to dry. So this is about a day later and I'm coming back and I'm just looking over to see that I haven't missed any spots. Whoop, cat hair under her chin. Oh my goodness, I love the dress on this figure. But I noticed that there's still a little bit of dust on her collar. So I'm just going to give that a bit of a dust. Yeah, and going in with the big brush. And I've seen, I think I did pretty okay with this figure. Now what I wasn't able to brush off and couldn't see was there's actually a little bit of spider droppings <laughs> um, stuck to her hair. It's, oh, it's really frustrating because it just sticks on like crazy. So I just went over and used a cloth with detergent and warm water and I just rubbed it off. Now they are done. I'm pretty happy with how they turned out. Moving on to Marka and Sol. Her scythe is looking pretty nice and clean. I'm not sure if you remember the comparison to the beginning but looking so much better. 
Now I missed a bit in between her knuckles, so I just did that. And now I'm just checking the cape because I think that's the main tricky spot that I could miss. And I can see already here underneath on the grey undertone I missed a spot. So I'm going to wipe in there and then I had the corner. So I did pretty well with the creases, I think. I got the majority of it in my main wash. Now I can't help but just show you the face. I do really like this figure because it looks, well in my opinion, it does look like the original character so much. Now you can see how the arm is broken and I do plan to make another video on gluing figures which hopefully she will be in that one. If I was to put it in this one I feel like the video will be too long. <laughs> And for the moment, uh, I'll be happy with her at the moment, but I'll definitely be gluing that and making a permanent fix sometime. And now, having a look at Sakura Miku. Now, they said to me that they never had them on display, and when I opened it, it was pretty clear that they hadn't really. Like, you had two face plates probably removed. But honestly, it really didn't look like it had been opened much. But with saying that, like many old Nendoroids, it, she is very sticky. You can see that gloss on her already. Even though she hasn't been used, she's very sticky. So I'm going to have to wash all these pieces as well anyway. But I thought I'll do that inside because her box was the main thing with the dust. That I, that's the only reason why I wanted to wash them all outside is because of how dusty they were. I didn't want to wash them in my hand sink. Because I just opened it up, I feel like she'll be fine washing her in the hand sink. And oh, she's so cute. I already have this figure, but the reason why I got another one <laughs> is because I actually was missing one of her back hair pieces that you use to attach the cherries to her hair. And that's one of the reasons I really wanted to get her. But annoyingly, that piece was missing. Oh, this is so struggle. Oh, come on. Now, I, <laughs> I struggled so much trying to get this hair piece off. A little wiggle at a time. And just go out. <sighs> yes, five minutes of me trying to pull this off gently. And it's still stuck on... Oh. I didn't really, honestly, I did not think ah, I was going to get it off. I think, come on. Oh. Goodness. And then the second one, I thought, oh no, and that had a bit of resistance, but wasn't as bad as the first one. Got I it. thought, these seriously need a soak. I did eventually detach marker from the base. I couldn't at first, and I was afraid I would break the pegs, but I gently did. And look at that, it's actually clean. I, using a fine brush underneath her shoes, even while still attached, you can do pretty well if you can't remove the figure from the base. Now getting on to the Miku hair, I, mm, I definitely missed a few spots, but otherwise pretty good. So I just went over with my little bit of detergent and cloth. I have half the cloth dry, so then I can dry it afterwards. Looking at her dress though, oh, I missed so many little sections, so I'm going to have to fix that now here in my bathroom sink. But before that, I'm just going to fix her knee with a little bit of Jip, which is a creamer. It is strong like a magic eraser, and I use this because I don't have that many magic erasers on hand, and it's just an easy quick fix. Now you can get marks off with this, and as you can see, her knee is looking pretty good. You can accidentally remove paint as well if you're not too careful so I just say use with caution maybe if you first try it out try it out and figure that it's not too expensive but otherwise I find it really good for removing those really tough stains or marks now then getting to cleaning her again take two hopefully I get all the little pleats I leave the figures to air dry but if you want it to go a bit quicker you can just dab off the larger drops with a little towel moving on to Sakura Mitsu Nendoroid and I'm just giving her a good Good scrub with lots of detergent, warm water running, and then a cloth. I'm using a cloth because I feel like with the brushes I might accidentally scratch her because she needs a lot of pressure to get that stickiness off. Still, I'm thinking I might have to wash her a few times to get it off, but I thought I'd just do a vigorous first wash and hopefully I don't have to. 
And moving on to take two of looking at Miku. She's looking a bit better. I feel like I got everything now and she, that dress is looking very nice and sleek. Mm. Just, oh, stunning. And her knee is also clean and her ankle doesn't have that mark either. Now attaching the hair. Then attaching her to the base, which was a struggle within itself. Got so many points you have to line up, but I eventually got there and I must say, I am so happy I was able to pick up this figure, especially for $80, like the quality is gorgeous. I know they're re-releasing her, but still, the old version still lives up to, I feel like, the scales today. I have to admit though, it is smaller than what I initially thought she was, but nevertheless, she is stunning. The hair is incredible. And though I do love the song, it's probably, oh, would it be one of my favourites? Now with them all cleaned up, here's a quick showcase to show the results. I ran out of space to record Sakura Miku, but if you saw my room tour last week, if you haven't, be sure to check it out. But she was at the end of it, she's on my desk, and she's looking super clean and not sticky at all. Best of all, I can finally have a version where she has cherries in her hair. Oh, she's so cute! So there's my pre-owned haul kind of cleaning tutorial. Hope you all found this informative. When I started collecting, I probably would have been way too scared to clean a figure like this or would have cleaned it too gently and not get the results I wanted. So I just wanted to share this with you all that you can do this and they will be perfectly all right. I've had figures that I've owned for four years and when I first bought them, washed them like this, pre-owned obviously. And then since then, just been dusting them regularly and never had to wash them again. And from the figures that I've cleaned thus far, I've had none that have been damaged by cleaning them in this way. Thank you for checking out my video. If you enjoyed my content, please like, comment and subscribe. And I'll catch you with another video next week. Bye! <laughs>